Spezza drags it down in front. Matthews to Marner. After her, he kicks the John Tavares, overtime This is absolutely unbelievable by Austin Matthews. A complete turnaround. Kick the kick. To Mitch Marner. everyone and welcome to From the Booth. I'm John Bartlett alongside Greg Millen where we chat with broadcasters, get some fun stories and a little bit of background on what makes all these crazy characters in the broadcast world tick. Greg, how often do you think about the weather? Uh, I'm a weather guy, I'm not going to lie. All Why? Right. How, how much do you rely on weather forecasting uh, nowadays and maybe where, when you want to get the weather, where do you get it from most often nowadays? Internet. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. My phone. Or, or off your phone, right? Yeah. Well, back in the day, a lot of people, especially on a morning show on radio, would rely on the morning radio weather report, wouldn't you? I, I Absolutely. Yes, right. I did all the time. Right. So that had me thinking there uh, the other day when I was scrolling through for the weather on my phone. And, and of course, right now, people are probably paying a lot of attention to the weather. They want to know when they can open the windows and get some fresh air and be outdoors. And it reminded me of a fun story. So Back in the day when I worked in radio, uh, I was doing a morning show with a a great broadcaster by the name of Punch Andrews, Chris Punch Andrews. He was uh, a heck of a guy, and uh, unfortunately, we lost him too early, but uh, here's Chris right here, and uh, he was on Mix 99 in Toronto for a while. I worked with him at CKDX 88.5. We were together at Power 88.5 and 88.5 The Cat. What a lot of fun we used to have, but... Punch and I were doing the morning show uh, one time, and I was doing the news. So I was over in the newsroom. He's in the studio. And he calls me, uh, Johnny, we got to get ready. News is on. So I come running in. I don't remember why. It was I was scrambling to cut a last story. So I run in the booth, and I'm scrambling to get the papers ready. And the news stinger fires, and away I go. And I start the newscast. I get through news. I get through sports. Now it comes time for the weather. And I'm stalling for a second. He's looking. What's wrong? I'm scrambling. I can't find the weather report anywhere. I can't find the paper. And there was no monitor in front of us. Back in the day, you print it off and look for it. So my weather report, I panicked. I kind of remember I had an idea what the temperature was. So I literally looked out the window of the studio and said, well, for the weather today, it's a case of what you see is what you get. Mix of sun and cloud, chance of showers, high of 21. Today, it's uh, currently 19. (laughs) And he is laughing at the other side. I made up the weather report. So um, it was funny thinking of that today. There was a broadcast story for you. The one time I, I got stuck. Didn't have the weather in front of me, so I, I made it up. But uh, moral of the story, if you ever are broadcasting and aren't sure what the weather is, if you look out the window and give that report, you're pretty much covering all your bases. Case of what well, you, we, what call that dance, we call that dancing in the business. And we've all had to dance at certain times when things didn't go probably the way we would like. Funny about you play-by-play guys, though. You're always losing your paperwork all the time, your notes. or I mean, I used to hide. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not, who was the one that couldn't find his notes a couple of games before all the, the stop? The, I think I left at the hotel. It's in my bag. I couldn't, you couldn't find it. You, you know what? what? You're right. I pulled everything up possible out of my briefcase. I thought my notes were in the hotel. But thankfully, uh, maybe some fans probably would have liked it if they would have stayed in the hotel. But anyway. Uh, found them and away we went. Yeah, 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 right before we uh, had to shut it down. Okay, I'll give you that. All right, that's better. Well, uh, time to get to our first guest. And uh, obviously somebody that uh, doesn't have to worry about uh, getting the weather report wrong because she's done a lot of great things. I don't think she did weather along the way, but uh, a great interviewer and a great person, a great colleague of ours. Hockey royalty as of sorts. She shares her birthday with Patrick Waugh and Mario Lemieux and knows how to celebrate a good birthday dinner when you're stuck in Ottawa and can't stay at the restaurant you're originally at. Christine Simpson, how are you? (laughs) I'm good, guys. I got to say, it is great to see your faces. It's been way too long. Chris, how are you making out? I've I've thought so much about, like, I'm in the country. I mean, you're used to being in the country once upon a time in your life from London, Ontario. I've got lots to do here, but how do you do it, like, in downtown Toronto? It's got to be a bit challenging. It is. It's it's not only that being in downtown Toronto, but being on your own, you know, right. it, it's it. That's the other thing about self-isolation for me. 
it's really self-isolation when you've got no one else in the house. And I, I, I've never gone this long in my lifetime without having actual contact with other human beings. Um, so yes, things like, things like this technology, it's funny how, how much you learn how quickly when this is the only way you can really connect with friends. But I think I'm like everybody, right? Just trying to find the right combination of things to keep yourself sane, to keep yourself physically fit, mentally fit. You guys know I, I do my bar classes at Bar Studio, which I've now gone online. Luckily, my bar studio has sent out uh, classes online. So I have my little workout station in the basement. Okay. So Good. I usually start most days with that. The other thing I'm, I am trying to learn, and actually through our colleague, Tara Sloan, who's been um, practicing meditation her entire life, yeah. So through her, again, online, I've been trying to learn how to meditate. So that's another thing. Um, I've been actually taking a course online on the science of well-being that's done through Yale University. That's just a lot about, you know, sort of the power of positive thinking. So those are the things I'm doing sort of for my mind and my body. But then like everybody, you turn on Netflix. Okay, I'll admit, I've watched Tiger King now, like everybody else. <laughs> I've been binge watching Schitt's Creek, which I gotta say, makes me Have laugh. you just started on that? So I had seen the odd episode here and wow. there, mostly on planes, right? Because on Air Canada, it's there. But I decided now I'm gonna start from, the, from you know, episode one and i am loving it to the point where it's going to be so sad when it's over because i really do look forward to just getting that laugh uh from the levees they're so so funny so that's sort of the combination of my day you know, you know chris it's funny about you that. say that because my wife has kept me up when she was watching <laughs> that more than a few nights laughing beside me and yeah. going, what's so funny uh, I so understand. apparently i've never seen it but apparently it's, it's very funny it's oh. worth giving a try yeah, Schitt's Creek is, I, I love Schitt's Creek. Uh, Dan Levy did a great job with that. And you know what? This is funny. Talk about the times we're in right now. Uh, they actually had to put a message out. Schitt's Creek itself, the town, is, is Goodwood, Ontario, near Uxbridge, is where they, they film it. They had to tell people, we, we know you love the show, but stop visiting the town right now. People were going to drive there and see everything to see the where Schitt's Creek is, but it's like, it's not a good time. Stop coming to the area, stay at home, come another time. But John, you may not know this, but Chris knows this story real well, because I think we were working together, but Bob Cole wouldn't say it on air because he thought it was a swear word. <laughs> Remember that, Chris? So we would, we would try and talk, and I know you were, you've always been so great with Bob throughout the years. You're trying to help him. Uh, Love just, working with okay, Bob. Hey, Bob. But you're right. He's like, I can't say that word on the air. And it's like, well, it's, it's okay. It's a CBC show. That's the one time we actually can say the word. Uh, but, I, think, I think you had to do it because he wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, he wouldn't. Yeah, I would always read those promos because he was, there was no way he was going to do it. And I was the other way. As a fan of the show, I kept waiting. I'm like, when am I going to get a Shits Creek promo? I want to read the Shits Creek promo, knowing that Bob wasn't going to do it. That was funny. Hey, you know what? Since we're, let's have some fun with this. Since we're on that vein of, of TV and movies. Um, you uh, have had the opportunity to do a little television, and by that I mean fictional, and movies as well. I don't know how many people realize this, but you've got a little bit of acting chops in your background on TV and uh, in movies, don't you? Well, my, my one and only cameo in uh, one of the Saw movies, uh, for those who are interested in those gory movies, which I'm usually not, um, but yes, I played um, Donna Evans, talk show host extraordinaire on Saw. It was um, Saw 3D. So it was. There you are. Oh, and there, look at you. <laughs> they brought me up. They with Donna Evans. And it was so funny because you guys all know Oren Kulis, who at one point was a co owner of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Well, you, you may or may not know, Oren is also one of the producers of the Saw franchise, and they shoot those movies in Toronto. And I'll never forget, because it was 2010, it was just before I was going to Vancouver for the Olympics, and, and Oren calls me. I knew him just from doing some Tampa Bay Lightning games when he'd be down there. And he's like, uh, so... Chris, uh, I, got a, I got a part for you in my next movie. And I'm like, thinking this is a joke. I'm like, Oren, you know I'm not an actress, right? And he goes, no, 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 the role is a talk show host. He said, I'm looking through these demo reels of actresses pretending to be, you know, reporters, TV hosts. And I thought, 
why don't I just get Chris? She knows how to do this. So it was literally two days after I came back from the Vancouver Olympics that I went down, shot my scene. It took us, I, I want to say 14 hours to it's do amazing, like, yeah. like Crazy, maybe isn't it? a four or five minute scene in the movie. You just do it over and over and over again. And the funniest thing too was, so then usually the movies come out Halloween night. So it was that October and he invited me to come down to LA for like the, the premiere of the movie at Grauman's Chinese Theater, like the whole nine yards. And I figured, okay, I'm in this movie for like half a second, but still, when am I gonna be in a movie again? When am I gonna be invited to a, a Hollywood premiere of a movie I'm in? So I went down, I had a blast. I've got to admit, because it was the only one that they've done that's in 3D, of course, they hand out the 3D glasses for you when you come in which is a good thing because I spent most of the movie with my eyes closed. I, can't, <laughs> I cannot watch. I literally, like, it's not just, ooh, I get kind of, it's like, I can't watch it. So at least I had my eyes closed, but no one could tell because I had my 3D glasses on. Oh, and, oh that's and funny. I could just see you there because nobody likes a good party and a social get together more than Chris Simpson. Of all the people I know in the business, you, you would be number that. one. So for you to do that, I think that would be just, I wish I was a fly in the wall. That would have been spectacular. Oh, it was so much fun. Absolutely. It was a blast. Yeah. Well, that's funny you talk about, you know, when they want to hire somebody that actually does the job, because I always said if I ever had a chance to do movie and TV, it, every time you hear it, it's like, that's not how we do the job. So it did actually happen once. I, this is the movie I appeared in, The Grand Seduction, a Canadian movie. Uh, Taylor Kitsch was in it. I know, and, I uh, that movie. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not in it, just my voice. I'm in the bar scene when they do the hockey game. Oh, and, and I did it in the, yeah, I did the studio scene where uh, I, I revoiced a game and it was so funny. They're like, okay, uh, we have a script or whatever. And so I did the script. I'm like, all right, I remember calling this actual game. Why don't I just do it? They're like, sure, go at it. So I went at it and did it. And the other one I appeared in, this was, a, I don't know if anyone remembers this old series, but MVP, The Secret Lives of Hockey Wives, which some of it was shot in London, Ontario. And uh, I was the broadcaster of the uh, the team, uh, the Mustangs, I think it was, in that for a couple episodes. And and same thing, they had a script for it, and I did the script, and I said, do you want me to take a do a take as if I was doing the actual game? They said, yeah, go for it. So I did it that way, and it, I think it turns out a little better when we actually do what we do. Same when you're doing an interview in the movie set, right? So, exactly. Uh, so Chris, anyway, so that, that was a plug for the two your, <laughs> You started your career in you know in, in the ace it, i guess maple leaf gardens is the host at one point i think that's yeah. how you started i'm sure everybody would like to know your start in the business but in saying that did you know that john bartlett was the mascot in the last game ever played in maple leaf gardens and he was the mascot i just Hockey found game. this out doing Hockey. another show today so Hockey you game. have a lot in common indirectly oh my God. Hey, i need to hear that for what mascot what game it was the, the last hockey game, not the last sporting game, because the yeah. Toronto Rock, of course, were the last uh, game there. Uh, but it was the last hockey game ever played there. It was the Toronto St. Michael's Majors and the Mississauga Ice Dogs. And I helped out my buddy who was uh, doing PR for the Majors. They needed a, uh, somebody to wear the Mikey the Dog suit. So I, I had suited up and was the big shaggy Mikey the Dog for the last ever hockey game at Maple Leaf Gardens. So. Yeah, All right, Chris, let's, let's, hear about, let's hear about your time <laughs> So there. yeah, now what's, what's your story? What kind of suit, what dog suit did you wear at MLG? Well, I, I did not, but I will tell you this. I was hired as the in-arena host for the Maple Leafs at Maple Leaf Gardens in 1995. And my first game was also Carlton the Bears' first game. Wow. We started right. together. And you know the only reason why? So at the time, I was working at the Hockey Hall of Fame. I was the marketing manager at the Hockey Hall of Fame. And Bob Stellick, who was the head of marketing for the Leafs at the time, I'd gotten to know Bob through what I was doing at the Hall. And I'll never forget him, you know, giving me a call and saying, Chris, we're thinking of, because Paul Morris, of course, was the voice of Maple Leaf Gardens. He was the one who would call the goals and the penalties and all of that. But a big reason why there was a bit of a shift from a marketing standpoint is 95 was when the Raptors came to town. And I think the Leafs realized NBA is all about in-game entertainment and about, you know, jazzing it up and having music and having this and that. So I think Bob thought, okay, we need to up the entertainment value a little bit for, for Leaf games. So he phoned me to say, you know, we're thinking of instead of 
giving Paul Morris all of these promotional things to read because, you know, Paul is a pretty serious guy who just wants to, to do the, the scoring and all of that. So John's I'm, getting something, by the way. So carry on, Chris. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> well, so then he was like, we're looking at hiring someone who could actually be in the stands and could be interacting with fans and doing this and that. And keeping in mind, this was before. I mean, now every team and every arena has that in-arena host. But there's Paul Morris. Oh, Paul Morris, Morris for you. Look at that. Okay. Uh, I, ran, I ran off to get a photo. But there he is in his seat at Maple Leaf Gardens. Yeah, there so, he is. A wonderful, talking about wonderful him. guy. So yeah. I think Bob's just asking me, you know, from a marketing standpoint, what I think. And I, I, Bob, I think your your advertisers will be happy, you know, your sponsors, because it'll, it'll help promo, you know, sort of profile the, what they're doing a little bit more. And then he's like, well, great. I, I want you to do it. And I'm like, what? So starting in 95, they not only had me as their in arena host, but created Carlton the Bear first wow. ever mascot for the Maple Leafs. So Carlton and I were a tag team for the three seasons that I did that role while I'd be working at the Hall of Fame every day, taking the uh, subway up to College Street to Maple Leaf Gardens every night, never missed a game in the three seasons that I did it before 98 when Sportsnet was starting and uh, I made the shift over to, can't believe what I'm still doing today. You know, Chris, I know you champion uh, women in, in the sport and in broadcasting. And I'd, I'd love uh, for you to talk a little bit about that for all the young uh, girls and women that are trying to get into the business. And of course, you just had the all women's game, which was quite fascinating. So why don't you uh, share a little bit of your experience, maybe some advice as well for, for all the young women and, and girls that are, I know, uh, tuned in today. Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm so excited to see not only so many other women doing what I do, um, but I'm also so excited whenever I do hear from young girls or young women who, who have grown up really watching me and others do this to make them feel like, hey, that's something that I could do. Because I certainly, even though growing up around hockey, never, ever thought of this as an actual career possibility because there weren't women doing it. So I'm glad if by doing it, it, it definitely makes other women and young girls. Speaking of young girls, I, I think I see a young girl behind you, John. I was poking in. Yeah. Your daughter. Oh, you That's awesome. <laughs> Saw you on, had to see what was going on. <laughs> there she is. There I she is. love it. Take your daughter to work day. That's awesome. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But yeah, yeah. like through, through things like the Next Generation game that, that we've now seen the Toronto Maple Leafs do and, and my intrepid reporter Abigail Dove beside me doing those games and she's grown up knowing well that's absolutely something that I can do as you mentioned Greg the, the last NHL game I did hopefully not the last one this season but the last one we did was the game in Calgary on International Women's Day on March 8th and I will tell you that was in my wildest dreams, even when I started doing this, and as I said, have seen more and more women in this business, I never thought I'd see the day where we'd actually have an all-female broadcast team do it. Cassie Campbell, Pascal, and Leah Hextall, who in my opinion, just knocked it out of the park in doing play-by-play. -play. Um, and not just that, you know, Maria, um, Skinner, our producer, and- you Produced me in Ottawa uh, many, exactly. many years ago. You yeah. and me both worked with Maria back right. in the day. Yeah. So to have the um, vast majority of the production team be women as well as the um, on-air. And, and it was fine that we were able to do that, that one day to celebrate International Women's Day. What I look forward to, though, is there just being more and more women doing these roles at any time. And so, oh, there we are. There you are Kaylee with Kaylee Telios and Natalie Spooner, yeah. Exactly. And there, Kaylee is a, another great example of someone obviously growing up around hockey with her dad, Chris, being in the NHL for so many years. And now what she's doing with the Tampa Bay Lightning, I think is absolutely fantastic. And Natalie Spooner, who we are lucky enough to have on Hockey Central in our studios uh, from time to time, who's also hitting it out of the park, along with Carolyn Cameron. So uh, all I can say is if by some of these women seeing me do what I do, made them feel like it was a, an, you know, a, an opportunity that they could pursue career-wise, then I am thrilled about that. Now, Chris, it hasn't been easy either. I mean, you've had to hang around with me to begin with and a bunch of other men on the road and, uh, 
you know, the, the crazy dinners and all the other activities that go on that, that you wonder, like, what are these boys doing? But in saying that, you had some pretty good training on the way up. And you've often said that, that I often said, Chris, how do you put up with us? Like, we're yeah. a bunch of jerks on the road. Like, what are you doing? We're, we're little boys that haven't grown up, which you tell us every once in a while. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like what, to, how, I guess, you know, with your brothers and everything, you've had some pretty good uh, training, I guess, to put up with. You know, I have. I men. have. Yes, I guess I come by it honestly. Um, being the middle sister between growing up between two hockey playing brothers with my older brother, Dave, who was drafted by the Islanders back in 1980. Uh, and then, of course, Craig, my younger brother, who works with us as well at Sportsnet and Hockey Night in Canada. It's I mean, I guess I've just sort of been used to being one of the guys. And so that was never intimidating to me. And I think for a lot of young women, that, that might be the thing that um, steers them away from giving something like this a try because they might be intimidated by not just the people, but the environment. Hey, we're, we're in dressing rooms, you know, we're, we're in situations that aren't necessarily normal. For anyone who hasn't grown up playing the game, you know, I never played the game, so I certainly wasn't in dressing rooms from that standpoint. Um, but yeah, to me, hey, you, you just sort of, you have a, a bit of a thick skin, you put up with stuff, but I would like to think I also influence you guys when I can say, you know what, that is offside, that's not going to happen anymore. So if I can sort of raise the class level a little bit, <laughs> then I'm doing my part as well. It's a two-way street, right guys? Well, yeah. I felt like I was home more than a few occasions, which probably wasn't a bad thing. <laughs> Usually, usually Christine would give me the, are you sure that's early enough to leave for the airport? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? We oh, all have there? our things. Some uh, people are fine with dashing in at the last second. Some of us would rather get there nice and early and relax. Hey, I take care of you, though. I leave you with sunscreen if I'm leaving you in a, in a sunny destination, too. You know, you we sure look out for each other. We look well, and I think Milzy and I can both say that John Bartlett is social convener extraordinaire when it comes to being on the road, <laughs> particularly during playoffs where you actually do spend time in one city for, you know, more than two days. He is always the one, Milzy, you know, always the one. I've made a dinner reservation. I've booked a reservation for us to go to a comedy club. I've done this and that. But can I say, John, um, you provided one of the highlights of this season for me when early on we had that game in Montreal and you arranged for us to have dinner with Dick Irvin. Ah, yes, yeah. yeah that was a special night. A special well, night, yeah. That's so special. Of course, I've known Dick since my time at the Hockey Hall of Fame. He was around the Hall of Fame a lot and just such a wonderful guy. But, you know, I hadn't seen him for a couple of years. John arranged this dinner Dick, oh my God, couldn't we have just sat there? Well, we did sit there for hours. For listening hours. To his <laughs> stories where you just think, this guy has met everyone in, in the sports world and beyond and is such a great storyteller. So thank you for, for yeah, giving. Sorry, one of sorry for, there you go. For the, I wasn't prepared are. for that one, but there it is. Yeah, there don't it is. So yeah. Again, there he is. That, I should, I should point know, out we're too. We're going to hope uh, to get him on this show if he can figure out how to yeah. do it. Computer. Exactly. Uh, he's lined up, so we yeah. just have to get the computer thing going with with Dick. And, and yeah, I, I have yeah. been talking to him regularly. He's doing well, uh, just great. so you know as well. He's doing great, so, uh, that's, so good. that's part of good. You know, Christine, um, so many uh, young girls look to you as an influence, and I know you're great with your time for all of them uh, when you talk about getting into the industry. So, uh, where is it that maybe you picked up that? for yourself to be a, a great influence and who was an influence on you to sort of pass that along? Well, it's funny because when you talk about mentors and I've had this discussion with a lot of other women, not even just in the sports world, but um, you know, pillars of business, CEOs of companies now, because there are a lot more organizations now and I'm, I'm involved in a few of them. One, one being Wise Toronto, it's women in sports and events where it's, it's a reason to bring a lot of women together to basically help network and mentor. And so many of us though of my generation say that we didn't necessarily have, certainly not a female mentor to, to look up to because there weren't, again, in, in many of these cases, there weren't women doing mm -hmm. the jobs that, that we now have. Um, in many ways, I mean, I guess I'm, I was influenced along the way by, by lots of people, certainly 
my brothers, you know, just always supporting me and, and think early on when I was doing interviews, I'd often call Craig because it might be an interview with a former teammate of his or a former coach of his, even just to pick his brain on what insight can, can you give me? Um, but I, I, I can't say that I had a full blown mentor that I could always turn to and you kind of fumble your way through and you learn how to do it but that's not the way that you want to necessarily go through your career. So to me, it's just, it's just a natural thing. If someone's going to ask me a question, even though we all know that everyone has their own path that they take to get to this point. Um, and no one else is really going to even be able to take the path that I took. Cause as I said, it really started with just by virtue of being born into my family that happened to, you know, have hockey as a, as a big part of it. So everyone has their, their path that they're going to take. But still, I just think if there is any kind of advice or insight um, or answers to their question, at this point in my career, and I'm, I'm still thrilled to be doing what I'm And we have a little technical difficulty here we with Christine. frozen for a moment, and yeah. we hope she comes back. We hope she comes back. This is this Come is on, the, of course, the challenge. Yeah, there you're back. Okay, you're back. back. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. back. You're good. Yeah, I gotta hang in sometimes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Go ahead. This, you can finish your thought. <laughs> at this at this stage in my career, I do feel a responsibility to give back, and frankly, to advocate for women. And and I because I if I don't speak up for them, not everyone else will. And I think. I'm, I'm very fortunate though, to have male colleagues like yourselves that also understand that Millsy, you in particular, cause you're surrounded by women in your home. I know yes. that. Yes, not anymore, but yes. yes. <laughs> so, hey, it's, it's part of the responsibility that I feel I have to my sport and to my industry because I look forward to seeing sort of the next generation of uh, women broadcasters taking over. I don't know if you can say this really quickly, Chris, you've got many strengths, but I love your interviewing. Uh, a quick tip on, on if you had a one quick mention of how to interview or what, what you have success doing. I would say, and, and it's something that I think we've all learned because you don't necessarily think about it. When you come into an interview with your list of questions, the, the biggest mistake people have is not listening to the answer. Because even though you might say, these are the five questions I know I need to ask this person. Well, they may some, say something in their first answer that takes you down a completely different path that you didn't even know that you were going to go in. So listening is, to me, the most important part of a good interview. And that is why well I had said. to pull a photo up off a phone and run away to grab another one because I didn't know we were going to have it. But there it is. We got it. So see, oh. that's what it is. That's how it works like that. Top production. <laughs> <laughs> Christine, uh, great to see you. Thanks for dropping by. This was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, obviously, it's great to catch up with all our friends right now. This is uh, what everyone's been doing. So uh, you're looking great. Stay safe. And uh, again, thanks for this. A lot of fun. Well, thank you to you both. And I can't wait to see you hopefully in a rink sometime soon. <laughs> Sounds good, Chris. And stay safe and hang in there. Thank you too, guys. Always a pleasure to chat with our friend Christine Simpson. And boy, she is a great role model for so many women in the industry. She really is, and for all of us too. I mean, she kept us in line, uh, or kept me in line, and still does when we're out in the road having a bit of fun. Uh, a great woman, and uh, always uh, fantastic to see her, and I hope she's doing well. It's kind of tough when you're by yourself in, a, in an apartment in downtown Toronto. So like many of us right now, uh, it's a tough goal, but hopefully this will last soon, and stay safe, everyone. Absolutely, and uh, now if you're looking for movie recommendations uh, at this time, you know, you can go for Saw 3D and see Christine Simpson in that, or uh, maybe catch up on a couple of your Canadian flicks. The Grand Seduction, look for that one, or you can even go back to the old TV series, MVP. Shameless self promotion Shameless self-plug. Everyone's looking for something to watch right now. <laughs> and thanks for watching this edition of From the Booth. We'll see you next time. So long, everyone. Yeah.